So this WWE return last year, I'm very interested how that came about, how you were contacted, because let's let's be frank, you were pretty outspoken about some things that happened before, but it's not like you hadn't been back there. You had worked like a dark match in 2011, which I want to talk about later, but uh, almost out of nowhere, 2016, you and uh, Mike Mondo are back. Yeah, it was very random. Like, I, you know, I went back to school, got an education. Uh, I finished. I got two master's degrees. I got an MBA. And I got, uh, played football, too, didn't you? MSOL. Yeah, I played a year of football. I just wanted to try it. You know, it was something I always wanted to do. Um, but then, you know, so I got this good job after I graduated college. I had my own office up in Boston area and stuff. And I was teaching people how to like start businesses, run businesses, which was great. I loved it. I like teaching people, but I didn't like having my own office because I would sit there for eight hours a day and I'm like, I'm bored. I, this is crazy. Mm-hmm. So then I got a phone call one Monday. I got home from work and the phone rang and it was Mark Carano. And I was like, I didn't answer it because I thought, oh, great. They found something that I must have broken before. And like something like <laughs> they like I owe them money now, like something ridiculous. I don't know why I thought that. So then he texted me and he said, call me as soon as possible. Okay. So I called him. He said, hey, next week, can you be in San Diego for SmackDown? I said, sure. Uh, I guess so. Yeah, I'll do it. And then he's like, all right, cool. We'll send you your info. And then that was it. And then 10 minutes later, I got an email with my flight, my hotel, my rental car. And I was like, did this just happen? Like, this is this a prank? So then Mondo texts me and he's like, dude, we're going to SmackDown as the squad. And I was like, okay, let's do it. Who knows? And then every single week, or originally they said, we're going to bring you in for one week. That was it. Just that one SmackDown. That's it. Okay. And then we did it, and Vince liked it, and he came up to me afterwards, and he said, I'll see you at the pay-per-view at No Mercy. And I said, all right, I'll see you then. So then every week, we would fly home on Wednesday, and then Thursday, they would email us with our confirmation of, your, we need you at TV next week. And we never had a contract. It was just a handshake deal. And it was, you know, even a lot of the people in the back, like Mike Kyoto and stuff, they were saying, like, this has never been done before. Like, they put you guys over on the tag team champions in a non-title match. You're not even under contract. They're giving you a live microphone out there. Like, there's some – they trust you guys in a way. Because at any given point, we could have said, all right, you know what? Let's just really beat up Dolph Ziggler in the ring and give me the live microphone and I'll just talk trash. Like, <laughs> yeah. at any point in time, that could have happened. So they, they trusted us to do business right, and we just kept doing business by them. And then one day they just stopped calling. But – That's just how the business works, I guess. What kind of differences did you see over the past eight years since you had been gone? It's very laid back. Everybody, it's it's more of a, I don't want to say it's more of a business setting because it always was, but it's just more of a, it's more laid back. People, I don't know, like when I was there, when we were coming up, uh, you know, there there was a lot of big names there. Not that there aren't now, but there are like names from the past, like, you know, Bill DeMotts and stuff like that. Some hardcore Holly, some tough dudes. And you had to hold your own. And now it's it's not that there aren't tough dudes. There's still tough dudes there. But it's just, you know, there's never that mentality of a dog-eat-dog world. It's more of just we know our part. And they're trained now to know that. Where when I started in the business, it was like, you know, you got to fight for your spot. You got to do what you got to do. And somehow you got to get there. Where now it's just, you know, everybody accepts their spot. And I think that's a good thing. Because everybody's part of the show. Even if you have to go out and wrestle and you have to lose in two minutes – you're part of that entire two hour program and that that's your part that day. And it may not be your part all the time, but if you use your time right in that two minutes, you can slowly get yourself over. 